Hello everyone, it's Rolf here and today we're back to Golgari, one of the coolest for uh, archetypes for the deck in the format. So uh, this is of course a control version, so we are going definitely for the wrong game and we basically play it like a different control deck, we have sweepers, we have value cards, just uh, we finish the game usually with huge creatures with very high value instead of a plain walkers or you know something like that. So. Uh, about the result, because I was thinking that if the meta is so aggressive right now, uh, Gorgari generally performs really well against it, at least in my experience, because you can ramp into Midhook Massacre, so even on the draw, Midhook Massacre usually answers everything. And yeah, you have still pretty nice sweepers this way. And also Invoke Despair, the huge card that gives you value, at some point it helps you make this phase of stabilization when enemy is playing one creature a turn because you already got rid of the flute and you know when you can answer this one creature and draw cards and play lads at the same time you are just getting so ahead it closes the game and that's something i really like about the deck and yeah that was my line of thinking and also calling ritual card that i really like currently like it has clear drawbacks but when it works oh boy you can do so much with this and this can close so many games uh, yeah so about the results we'll talk in the end of the intro but right now let's delve into the decklist what exactly are we against and with so calling ritual for mana you basically destroy everything that's not a land with value two or less and you get mana this mana is the big part of the card because it lets you sweep and also get the initiative, something other sweepers don't do. Also, it clears not only creatures, but enchantments. So against Boros, for example, this Kumano, while in enchantment form, will also die. It, it, it will also give you mana. So that's pretty sweet. And this is one of the reasons I really like the card. If you can follow it up with Invoke Despair or Warchief or something huge like this, the game is just so over. Uh, but even small things like Extra Stomper, it's just so helpful or extra trespasser for the for the, the for the fact like having additionally this on board while the enemy just was swept is pretty huge of obviously the problem is that it doesn't clear bigger creatures but for this reason you have the rest of the removal right you also have some creatures so we can answer them but honestly like binding of the old gods just loves having something big to, to get rid of so especially with shigeki you can ramp a bit so you can hit it a bit faster and when you start playing bindings you, the game is just so healthy you have so much mana you have so much stuff of course it's turn four so it's especially rough on the draw obviously when you are on the draw against boros it just isn't pleasant experience <laughs> Uh, but we have Parasity Grass, pretty good card against Boros. We have Inferno Grass, Blood Chief, and obviously Mid Hook Massacre. We also have one March because with this deck you really don't have as much life gain as in other decks. Of course, you have very top heavy healing. So we have War Chief, Titan, and Onyx. They can heal you quite a bit. Well, actually, we have quite a lot of healing when you think about it because Celestus heals a bit, Trespasser a bit, uh, Parasity Grass, but this removal is a bit tailored to enhance this style right because at some point we want to stabilize uh, against enemy and uh, we have so much mana that you can really benefit heavily from the march and against even like uh, control matchups you can get rid of the coins which are a bit of a you know sideboard card in a way and you can then remove a plane walker for one mana with you know just cycling that card so it doesn't hurt you as much as usually so it's pretty useful as a one-off, I feel, in the deck. So, with that being said, uh, what are the results? Results are weird, because I wasn't matched with aggro decks too much. Like, in, I think, 12 or 13 games, I played against Boros twice. Only. And I played mostly control matchups. <laughs> I actually played, like, I don't know, 7 or 8 games that were completely... Uh, like Azorius control, Ors of control, like the hard control, you know, archetypes. Which is weird, because I have played the same day before, and when I took other control deck, I actually faced Boros five times in a row, and I thought that the ladder is basically only Boros. So, 
Yeah, I, I'm sure that you also have this kind of experience. So I don't know. <laughs> Wizards, uh, you are doing definitely some magic there. So uh, hard to say how it answers the, the aggro because we don't really play against aggro. And against control decks, I have to say this is not the... Like, it has a lot of value. And you will see that we can grind through the enemy control decks. But let me tell this, it's just so much pain. It's just so hard because you basically need to grind the whole deck and hope that your Shigeki and Invoke the Spares just grind more value than the enemy cards. And usually it very often goes to milling like the full deck. So that's definitely not the type of matchup you want to hit with this deck. You basically want something uh, more aggressive, more quick, that you can quickly get rid of with Midhook Massacre, then close the game with Invoke Despair and heal with the War Chief and Titan. So that was your strategy. So yeah, in the end we were hovering around 50%. I think we lacked one game in like, I don't know, 14, something like this. Yeah, I don't feel that the stats really answer the question. So sorry for that, I tried my best, but the ladder is a beast right now. It seems that the Boros is not here, but I'm pretty sure it's there. I just don't get matched with it too much. So maybe, maybe that's a point for the deck. If you don't like Boros, maybe you won't get matched uh, with Boros so much when you play this one. So with that being said, the deck is extremely fun. I really like this kind of style and this kind of cards. Uh, it, it plays like an extremely heavy value style, so I think something that tailors a lot of uh, control mages, like us probably, so you probably will like it. And in casting Invoke Despair as always is fun, Professor Onyx and Titan really close the game quickly, and uh, my favorite card, the Topiar Stomper, is amazing. Every time you see it in turn 3, you feel a bit happier in your life. So. With that being said, I think it's worth to try this deck. And about the games that you will see, I'm not sure if I will include this one, but there is one monster game. And I mean monster freaking game. And I, I honestly will tell you, I was so triggered at the end of this game. And you will probably, when you watch the video, you will know exactly why. And I think it was pretty epic, honestly. Like, emotions are down after playing it right now. So, objectively, I think it was a really good game. But man, when I was there, oh man, I had emotions. So if you like this kind of games, definitely check it out. If it's included, I will try to, you know, show it in the chapter description so you know which one is it. So with that being said, enjoy the video and as always, if you like the channel, if you like the decks, if you like what we are doing here, don't forget to subscribe because it really helps and it gives you cool decks so you don't really lose anything and you gain hopefully a lot if you like those decks. So let's enjoy the games and uh, have fun! Alright, we are on the draw. We have quite a lot of removal. I really like the dig up. And I think, I think that this is card that we want to keep. Because this might be the, the answer. Like, uh, getting invoked the spell with this would be pretty huge. Uh, we are against Grixis. Hmm. I actually think we might need to Inferno Grasp something at the end step. We have four runs. Let's try this. And we have one chance to play a non-black land. So let's do it. Uh, you might ask, why Sloth? Why we have the last chance? Because if you draw Invoke Despair in the next three turns, you want to cast it for five mana. It means you ha can have only one non-black mana. They are black, but this one is forest. If you cast uh, uh, play double forest, you are in for a nasty surprise. Uh, we want to play Celestus. So for this reason, we will use our good instant. So if we play this, we cannot invoke the Sparon Curve, which is brutal. I generally like playing Celestus as quickly as possible. We have enough lands, we don't have enough value. Midhook Massacre will be pretty amazing because we have all the lands on the curve. And also, oh, what are we playing against? Oh, wow. I th This is not what I thought. Is this the Kami deck? I'm not sure what we are playing against, honestly. This is a very good draw. Alright, Blood Chief first. Do we go for Zayatora? 
Yeah, I think with Celestus we have ways to cycle stuff. Yeah, it would be tapped, don't worry, but if we play Dig Up to get Swamp, we, we could cast uh, Invoke the Sperm Curve. So we get a little bit of punishment, but at the same time... Can we double spell? I have no idea. Is this some kind of fight rigging or rea reanimator deck or Kami War? It's five colors, right? Blue, black, white, green and red. Yeah, all of them. That's interesting. I have no idea what I'm playing against. If we double spell, we can cycle, but probably it's not the most important thing. Let's play like this. We get the swamp, we play the forest, and then we will think what's up next turn. Invoke the spell is extremely important here. This is our way to win the game, basically. Somehow. And I want to make sure that if we whiff on Invoke the Spur, yeah, like, we won't have 4 mana for Blood Chief first on top of the Spur, and we will be able to cast Blood Chief... Oh no, we don't have enough mana, right? We have 4 black, 3 here and 1 from Celestus. That's brutal. Celestus is amazing. This actually really hurts us. I still don't know what we play against, but it's fine. It's fine. It means that we cannot cast the mid hook. Enemy might decide how he plays this, but I think we play like this. We also get additional land for the, you know, thingy, so it will acti activate a bit quicker. We could also just remove the Kiki Jiki. Huh, that's a hard choice because we could maybe not waste this because this gives him, but he's short on lands. Let's make sure that he has problems. And we still get to draw at least one card. So this is a creature, this is an enchantment, okay. Yeah, I guess he is forced to sacrifice both, because... Yeah, he first needs to declare the creature, right? Yeah, first is the creature. I, I didn't notice this part, actually. We missed on the land, unfortunately, so we cannot pressure them. That's not great. This was pretty important to pressure them, but we'll go with the Trespasser. Enemy is stuck on for mana. This is one of the reasons we wanted to invoke, so he cannot build his mana base too much. And I'm pretty sure he's not happy to see. Okay. I'm pretty darn sure that's not the play. Also, it, it couldn't attack. That was so weird, I think that maybe enemy has something that uses stuff, but I will definitely get rid of the titans, because he really was eager to discard them, so I suspect some foul play. I was thinking about reanimator, honestly. I don't remember what Kami does, I think it takes something from the graveyard as well. Like, we are going full night mode, right? Do we have creatures? No. We have, but exiled. I guess we just attack and see how he reacts. He needs to do something at some point. There is a chance that we cast Midhook Massacre for nothing. Like I'm seeing some of, like against Fable, Midhook is so good. Okay, that's fine. Not perfect, but fine. I guess we wait for, for better cards. We have answers, but enemy poses no threats. And don't uh, let it fool you, if we cast this he would do it in response, so we will never get the stuff. We have enough mana to pay, that's really good draw. That's actually our top deck. Because we are such a good player, of course. <laughs> Dig up is also amazing, because we can fish for Shigeki or invoke despair, so our value just shoot through the roof. Right now we just need more lands. Whatever happens, we just need more lands and we win. Oh, that's so good. Oh my god, that's so perfect. We can even ramp with the carrying ritual. Is this better than the mid hook? That's interesting. This gives us mana, so we can go for a really explosive turn. Honestly, I like it. We won't get better situation than this. And let's go for... We definitely play the Stomper. 
because it's a perfect card for every situation. Enemy deals some damage, we do not care. And yeah, let's resolve our 3 damage. Like, enemy is only at 3 cards and he basically did nothing, so that's not a great situation for him. And I think we dig up right now, because he has theoretically blue. Oh man, I'm so excited about those cards. All of them are amazing. I think it's Invoke Despair because it's lethal next turn if he doesn't react. And this is always that something that you really like. Uh, killing enemy unless he does something. That's, that's a good position to be in. So it is coming. I probably should read the card finally, right? Exile target non land permanent. Yep. We are over this one. Return up to the one target, non land permanent to its owner's hand and discards. And then transformed, yeah, 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 it gets some stuff from the graveyard, right? Whenever defending player chooses a non land, return that card to your hand. Yeah, so that was the reason he's so eager to do stuff. He stepped out, so we go for Invoke Despair because it's our better card in a way. So we don't want to get it countered. I don't know if they run counter spurs, but I'm definitely not trying... Oh, sorry. Not the intention. We can get only one card with Shigeki, so that's pretty bad. We could get rid of his mana. Like, what is his mana base? This is his only white source. This is extremely greedy, and honestly, that's a bad play. So let's make some mistakes so the enemy can come back. <laughs> but with this kind of deck, there's high chance this might be his only basic. If not, well, we just helped him, but he still needs to get white, right? So basically, instead of Trium, he has one of those mana. All right, I am I'm great. You, you can tell, tell, in, tell in the comments how great of a play that was. <laughs> Yeah, that, that sucked. That, that was definitely not the way to go. Uh, can we meet Hook Massacre? Yes, sure. Like I, I, I'm playing like this because I'm pretty sure that we are so ahead that we can't really lose this one. He gained life. That's a very bad choice. He should get the shield. He lacks value, not life. And I don't think he wins the longer game. That's also a pretty good draw. Thanks to this. We can actually make full use of our turn. Finally, the binding has great target. Man, this animation. It's like Scorch Earth, like those tanks that were pew. <laughs> I will never get used to this. All right, and let's dig up for another Invoke Despair. Man, Professor Onyx is tempting. Titan of Industry? I don't think so. I think Invoke Despair is just the best, because it answers whatever he plays and still draws cards. And with Shigeki, all we need to do is just slow him down and answer whatever he plays. Celestus is way too late, way too slow. So that's perfect. Also at some point Binding will go into the graveyard so we can get it back with Shigeki and kill the Celestus. Like, we are on the track to win this game easily. I like the play, so he just invested turn to cycle one of the dead cards. And thank you. Oh man, the more mana you have with this deck, the more happy you are. Uh, creature, 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 creature. We have some creatures, but why would you ever play creatures? And you can just... And this is the turn, so he cycled one land and he basically drew one card for six mana. You will see how much value we will get when we... Uh, spend full turn doing nothing and this difference we should really close the game very quickly because Shigeki is way better than the Celestus in closing the game first let's give him the opportunity to make decision like he doesn't know about Shigeki I'm pretty sure he suspects it but he cannot be sure so let's make sure that he has to react 11 mana so we go for four cards. Oh man. <laughs> this is why you play this deck. One, two, three. <laughs> oh man, this is this is ridiculous. And we'll go for the dig up. Just for just in case. You know, we might not hit something. That would be awful. Alright. So basically this 
uh, is using the card that is basically dead right now. Man, this is just so fun. If we draw untapped land, we could cast another one, right? If it's black. We did not. A bit unfortunate. And I think we get back Shigeki, because I still don't feel like we have enough value in hand. And we get Shigeki, right? Because this card can get legendaries as well. So that's pretty good. I have no idea if we have basic, and at this point I don't extremely care. Perfect! Perfection! Can you feel... like, we are actually using every single bit of mana with like 14 lands. So even if he draws 5, like, he just dies this turn. I don't know how much mana we have, but it's enough to cast double invoke despair. This is only treasure uh, artifact, so no enchantment. So we basically have six triggers that deal two damage. And he nullifies one, he might uh, heal with Celestus maybe once, and that's 10 damage directly. Also five cards, you know? <laughs> oh man, this is perfect. This is the, exactly the kind of hand you want with this deck. You want to be on the play with mid hook massacre and the ramp, and also some value. The only thing we miss is uh, invoke despair, because at some point, like this hand is really quick. Uh, don't let it fool you. After like turn five, we don't really have anything to play, so we need to just draw it, you know, from the top, like a good magic play. See, easy. And if enemy plays any kind of human, and there is a chance they will, uh, we just parasitic grasp it. If not, we just go with the Stomper, probably the Binding. I, I suspect, like, Wedding Announcement deck, but we definitely go for the Stomper. And this is probably, uh, even though I like this uh, the Tutor quite a lot, yeah, Vanishing Verse, sure, go, 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 go. We, we got our value. Actually, I even prefer him to Vanishing Verse because it means that it will get wasted. And now he gave us information that we cannot play World Chief before. Oh, even worse. Okay, but they definitely have Vanishing Verse in the deck as well, four of them. So we need to be really careful with the World Chief. Okay, okay. So I think this is the target for Binding, and we probably dig up just to get land. With this deck, you never, you never have enough lands. Uh, the point where you sh hit Shigeki, you can use like 40 runs a turn. So, you know, if that wasn't the Vanishing Verse deck, I would definitely War Chief now. But it is. And Binding is such a great value. And the creature is pretty scary. Like the 3 4 demands answer sooner or later. So, we might as well do it right now before he gets any value from the graveyard. Man, you are just, you know, you know what you are. <laughs> and I think we might blitz this. If we if we have the mana, I'm pretty sure I will blitz it. Because enemy is tapped out, he cannot vanishing verse right now. And the token will be there. And if he vanishing verse the token, that's perfect. All right, so, okay. I probably will talk about this in intro, but this deck... Uh, this land should be this one, but I'm just, you know, too poor to buy the fourth one. <laughs> and for this reason we take this one, because this has no cycling, the other one has, and they both come tapped and we don't have snow synergies. If you ever wondered, like this is good draw, but please land, I need a land. Well, like we are drawing a lot of cards. <laughs> We definitely are. Uh, now we can safely dig up just to play a land, and it will be beneficial. Enemy is only at 4, we are at 6. That's a big difference. Rolf. I do not mind Rolf one bit. The only problem is that I don't really want to waste value from this. I really do not. And I think we lack mana to do both. Uh, I I could use it for the hive, but I'm just not convinced, you know. 
And I think enemy stepped out, so this is the turn to do the thing. And now we kill the Rolf. Whatever he does, it doesn't matter. And we still get to draw a card, and we still get 4-4. Uh, and the enemy is losing Planewalker. With this, we lose quite a bit of value. Like, we only draw one card, and basically the best card of the deck nearly is Nullified. Also, he can exile it with Beholder. Well, I guess he can anyway, right? Uh, with Dublin Invoke, I don't think we are short on value anytime soon. So, let's just make sure that we hit lands every single turn. Yes, please. Man, Warchief. Such an amazing card. We need to play with this more. Like, tree toughness is a problem. But the idea is that it dies and it's still good. As you can see. Like, he can attack for 4, but what's, what's the rest of the plan? Interesting. Does it mean another plane walker? It seems like another plane walker. Which, if he has another Rolf, that's perfect because we can mid hook massacre. I'm not sure if he has, but if. Then we mid hook massacre for one, and we have our Rhino that attacks for three. Rolf will be at one still, so that's not perfect. Okay, okay, noted. Yeah, here, here it comes. All right. Let's start with this one. Like, man, this is so tempting. And going invoke the spare after this, make sure that, yeah, it's just so good. And you know what? Will enemy block? They seem to be a bit scared about the HP. They did something that made me think that they care about the HP a lot. Yeah, they didn't attack with the spider. Honestly, not sure why. Maybe he just wanted the token and he didn't want to draw a card. Yeah, let, let's do it like that. I think that's still okay. And the fact that we keep drawing cards is pretty amazing. Yes, he can go for the hive and he can exile one of the invokes or the rhino or one, something. But it will be his full turn. He plays one round, he has two mana only. That's not how you win the game. Sure, you exiled one card from the graveyard while you did nothing and just 3 damage, basically. So, if we can time walk for 3 life, I will gladly take it. This is weird. This is Vanishing Verse, right? I think it is. I'm so glad it's just Orzov and not something with counter spells, because one test of talent destroys this deck. <laughs> and I'm so glad they don't play something that can do it. They definitely have some instant. Alright, Vanishing Verse. Perfection. And the Exile uh, completely does not matter because it, it's a token. So that's the perfect scenario. Now, no wedding announcement. Like, we are just starting with the value and the enemy is nearly out of breath. Double land is definitely not what we wanted here, but it's okay. We might even cycle it, I'm not sure, but we are definitely at this point that it might be a thing. Okay, I like this. What will you name? We will kill it anyway, right? But And they will never guess the Parasitic Grasp. I think they go invoke the spell. Easy. It won't matter, but it's still fun. They can use the Hive. And this is the, the like more scary part. If they want, I'm super happy. All right. Uh, we could actually go for extremely high Agadim's Awakening. Yeah, for five. Oh, 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 oh man, that's so freaking good. Let's read the card. I want to make sure I never used it for such high value. Return uh, to the end number that have each different cast. Yeah, 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 sure, perfect. And this has five, right? Yeah, Blitz is six. Man, this is just amazing. Look at this freaking value. And this is instead of a one basic swamp. Can you imagine swamp doing all of this value? Like this is like 14, 14 in stats. And we also heal. And we have double blocks for the hive. Uh, do we go for black? Of course we do, of course. 
I will play one of them. And I think we play the rest of the hand and see what we draw. Like with uh, Professor Onyx, I'm pretty sure we don't have huge troubles with, you know, killing enemy. We actually even, like, we could even use the Invoke Despair if we care. Like, next turn we might just use it to kill the enemy. Yeah, he gets some card. And I lose 3 life. But he's dead. So it's very, very soft counter to the card. I'm pretty sure that we are circling, like, vert Vulture? Vulture? Yeah. Whatever. Uh, around the corpse of our enemy right now. The bad, uh, Gala bad, Bala get recover is amazing. Man, I cannot talk. <laughs> like, honestly, what the hell? So, what is the play here? Do we attack face? It seems like it, right? Enemy knows what's coming and he knows that he needs to defend. If he takes the damage, he just dies. So that's pretty simple, that he needs to do something. Unless he's going full gamble that we don't have Invoke Despair. Well, which would be very, very brave. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty sure he will block the Stomper with Spider. That's probably the best play. He could also double block. Uh, but then he doesn't get really much value from Lolf because he needs to sacrifice her to get the Spiders. That's not what you want, really. I wonder if he's thinking about taking 9 damage and thinking maybe he's in such a bad spot that he needs to gamble that we don't have it. Alright, that's really good. I really like this one. This is human, by the way. So I'm pretty sure... And if we can kill the Planewalker, we'll just win the game outright. Oh, a Gandra. Okay, okay. This is this is something I did not expect. That's fine. So the game is on. We get some Rhino action. I mean, Hook will create so much pressure here. Let's make sure that we try it here. Nice. And now we go for the Parasitic Grasp to not give him the card. And he My has love. So let's start like this. And we don't care about the loyalty, and he will never okay. see this value. And he's at 4. Next turn we can just outright kill him. Uh, this is one of the reasons I think I won't cast this card. <laughs> we can just directly go for the dig up and kill him. And that's probably what we will do. I think we have one more invoke, right? We could also go for the Professor, but honestly, he's at 4. He might want to exile our Graveyard, this means he doesn't do anything this turn and we just kill him from the hand. If he does anything else, this is too weak. Every job is an opportunity to Unless maybe he hits Creature, but we still have the Rhino, right? So he needs to sacrifice the Creature, I'll but I guess it has Shield, so he needs to hit a Creature and maybe he lives for one turn. But we just, you know, get the stuff back and we have meat hook. Or we just, you know, do this. <laughs> Good game, bro. Uh, man, this deck is so insanely powerful. And this is why we are ranking with this one to Mythic. Alright, going first. Ah, not the best hand, but definitely we have things to, that are going for us like we have check for traps which will disable best play from the enemy hopefully let's check for traps we will know exactly what we are against we, what we are against oh man see guardian savior when enters return up to two target creature cards two or less okay okay this one something we need to remember Probably Valkyrie. Yeah, we do not have good answer to this. This will also be a problem. But it's still the Valkyrie. We need like Infernal Grasp very quickly. March is great. 
but not against such insanely uh, tough creatures. Alright, so this is our forest, the rest need to be swamps. And Invoke Despair is something we really need very quickly. Unfortunately he will go for this one, so he may not sacrifice the Valkyrie. That is unfortunate. Honestly, this is pretty good. Bro. We definitely go for this. Is Invoke Despair good here? Like, it definitely doesn't kill. It's basically a card draw, right? Valkyrie will be a problem. It will definitely be a problem. Five mana drop will be extremely annoying to deal with. But I do believe that maybe we can do it. And also we will get attacks with the Stomper. Like, it's not the biggest deal. But it is definitely some deal. Okay, nice. I need to be careful about the shield. Enemy can always protect his creature as long as he's uh, not completely tapped. Uh, I do like having binding. Because I like my lands. With this deck he won't lands. Boseju, there is argument to not play Boseju. Takenuma. Hmm. We definitely play the land. And I think we invoke the spare. It also negates the the boon of safety because it's sacrifice effect. Which one will be better? I don't think we will have time to play Takenuma. It's also black so a bit better. So first, let's attack. He will never block with this. And Giada will be incredible problem. There is a chance that he will be greedy and he will just block to save 4 HP, but it's such a bad play that I do not think he will. But it matters a bit because we probably don't win like this with attacking, right? But it prevents Valkyrie from activating. Because to activate Valkyrie you need 27 life and when you get Smork for 4, you don't have 27 life. And it ma makes Valkyrie way weaker. Man, what's up with the people not playing <laughs> magic while they play magic? Oh, and he's got maybe he got disconnected or something. Uh, the disconnect seems very popular lately. You know what? That's interesting. I do not mind this one bit. So we killed Yada, right? But this is so mana inefficient. If he draws land, he just plays this and gets back Giada and Valkyrie and that's devastating. And I think we need more cards. If we draw something that is black, we might exile it for this one. But of course, the only thing we drew is just double land, which this might be good game. This draw after playing Invoke Despair might be our end because it is horrible. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did he sacrifice Giada? Oh man, that was awful play. Like, I know he, he was happy to get double value from Legendary, but that was awful play. Which won't matter, because we only draw lands since basically three turns of draw. And that's horrible. But now he doesn't have good Graveyard, right? Oh man, this is so awful. How does it work? Uh, prevent damage, right? Would be dealt or destroyed, remove shield counter. So no damage is dealt. That's pretty huge. Man, this game is auto win. But we need any card that isn't a land. That is not a land. Man, like, it's, it's a bit triggering at the moment. Especially enemy keeps protection. Like, we just need to hope we will draw it at some point. And that's another land. We are only drawing lands since 5 turns. Man, like, today I had so many games like this, it's so painful. And on the other hand, you have games where you don't draw anything. And you just die because you cannot hit the third land for 5 turns. <laughs> like, magic. 
Magic, why are you doing it to me? He's not greedy. Which normally would be our win, but if you don't have cards and you don't draw cards, it's probably something that wins him anyway. And nobody is salty. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Because uh, yeah, he tapped the Giada. Like we need to hit mid hook from the top. This doesn't change anything against mid hook, so we can safely do it. Sure. Eight toughness, perfect. But we have so many lands that if we hit it, that's another land. I will count three non land spells, four, five. In 18 cards, we drew five that aren't lands. Is this real? So we drew like two thirds of our all cards were lands. And we play, I think, 26 or 27, but mostly 26. Man, this, this was complete. <laughs> I'm signing out. All right, so as usual, we are on the draw. Uh, we have quite heavy ramp and calling ritual into the spur, so of course, and we don't get the creature matchup, it seems. Man, like today we are just... Everything seems to go wrong. When we have good anti-creature hand, we do not get creature decks. When we... Either we fruit or we get scryed. Man, like... The, another day in the arena, right? So let's go for black here. We play the visionary, so we can at least ramp a bit. From the next turn onwards, we might get countered. Not sure exactly what we play against, but it seems to be a control deck. Like Azorius Control, just with bad lands. Uh, this might be March. Yep, and a good decision by the enemy. Definitely something you want to do, if you can. So we can ramp into Invoke Despair, but against this kind of deck it's so hard to win if they have good draw. And we didn't really draw what we needed, so this half of the draw is basically useless. But at least with Celestus we can get rid of it. Midhook is a bit better than the other one. Hmm, that's an interesting one. So I think we play like this. So he has a counter spell. He also has memory the rouge. We should probably get rid of the Devious cover-up, especially if they play multiples. They cannot memory the rouge this turn because they play bad lands, so that's really good for us. I think we need to go like this and pressure them enough so they cannot uh, go easily at least for the draw. And if they do, we cast memor uh, Invoke Despair and try to pressure them this way. Definitely take action. Like, Midhook deals damage. They kill Planewalkers. I think it might be this one. Like, if you watch the, the game, uh, you will see that Midhook Massacre is a big thing. Let's keep drawing. Okay, we have another Midhook in the deck, so I'm okay with this one. And we missed on the land, so we cannot... Okay, we wouldn't be able to attack anyway, I guess. We have six mana, but only five lands. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So we only get one card, and he basically trades the Emperor. That's a good play from his side. But we still get to get a land, and that's pretty nice. We cannot target this, so... We don't really do much more. It also prevents him from playing Deluge, even though he really wants right now. If we dig up, we could start attacking with the Stomper. And honestly, that's pretty strong play. We have 4 black, right? Yeah. So just to activate the attacker, that's pretty huge. 
It might also bait some response from him, which would be sweet. Nice. Alright, the game is on. We have Field of Ruin, that's also really good. Uh, he might not react. He doesn't have good reaction here. He probably wants to cast the Emperor anyway, right? But if we don't do this, he just memory the rush and it really helps him to go ahead. Still, uh, it's pretty smart play because he goes 2 for 1 for the card that usually goes 3 for 1, so that's pretty okay. And our draws pretty much suck. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> That is pretty awful, but at least we can cycle it slowly. This is definitely the worst draw in the deck for this kind of matchup. Man, Celestus just cycled so many useless cards because we don't really draw well. Not a single Shigeki, at least we have those involved Disperse, but other than this we basically draw only anti-creature part of the deck, as you can clearly see here. Bosage. First of all, let's attack. If he activates the hole, we activate Field of Ruin. Okay, nice. I do not mind it one bit. We could also go Bosejo, but he knows about Field of Ruin. So why not surprise him if, if we do it like this? Also, yeah. Like we get positive lands uh, compared to the other version. And he gets hit for 4, and he tapped out for no reason, really. And with the Hive, there is a chance. Uh, let's go for the night time, uh, daytime, because he is very likely to not play anything. And this means a free card from our side, and we want a lot of Hives. Yeah, Hives over... Yeah, we don't need color mana. Like, Bosedru is as good as this one. At this phase of the game. Okay, my turn. So, uh, we definitely attack. And if he will try to find answers, that will be even better. Because then we exile Memory Deluge. I hope he misses it, but I don't think he will. But it's already 7 damage. Alright, what this deck ha This deck had something, so Divius cover up. I'm not super scared about the horn. Honestly, the Emperors are super scary here, because they give so much value overall. A Ganja. Okay, that's card for card, and we have another one. We need to get into Shigeki at some point. Yep, this also forces him next turn to use Memory Deluge after we declare the attacks, or before even. So he will only have two mana here. That's pretty huge. And we'll actually play it for it. Because we can kill him if he Memory Deluge, and that's perfect. We like what we like killing enemies. Uh, we actually want the. Yeah, I said it doesn't matter. It matters. Never mind. <laughs> but right now, enemy is pressured for eleven. If he wants to draw cards, that's not great. Okay. So now he will be pressured for three. And memory deluge is out of the picture, and he really wanted it. Bye. This is how we get rid of the value. I think he might go for the Hall of the Storm Giants somehow next turn. Man, our draws suck so much. Like, we are doing mostly lands since quite a long time. Like, we have Liliana, we have Double Shigeki, we have more Invokes. Like, we have uh, Bad Recovery, like, we have so much stuff that could help. Alright, uh, enough rant, Sloth, enough rant. See? I'm not drawing 
ranting. I'm just saying that we generally draw, draw lands most of the turns. <laughs> and enemy, I'm pretty sure he did not draw a land. Like, if he got March from the top of his deck, I will rage so much. <laughs> uh, Devastating Master seems good. Let's get rid of this one, though. And most... Okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Maybe we should kill... Yeah, we probably should kill it before. I didn't think this two life will matter. That's actually pretty huge. But that's fine. We will, we will get there. However, enemy has quite a lot of cards now. Alright, game is on. So probably the better play would be to use Boseiju at some point of the game where he was tapped. But honestly, I thought that Hall of the Stone Giants will have a bigger impact on the game. He's at 1, but he has so many cards that there's very high chance I should have played land. I'm just a bit triggered. <laughs> yeah, definitely that was the play. That's a good sign. It means that he probably doesn't have answer. Unless he wants to play the land so badly, but I don't think that had sense. So probably he's looking for March. Man, if we hit mid hook, it would be very good. Like it's not the best card, obviously we won't invoke the spell or something like this, but at least this. Please just please not another land. I, I, I just want this one to not be land. That's not a land. Alright. Okay, we have to do it. And that was pretty quick. Huh? Is it the turn? No, of course it's not. Always. Never didn't have it. Alright. Sure. And we probably Shigeki now because it gives us additional card. Can we double the spell next turn? Yes, we can. It means that we go for double despair and pray. Enemy is praying, we are praying, one of us will hit it. By the way, check for traps deals one damage, especially against control. So we can... We, I actually killed enemy with this one. Double invoke. He cannot counter it because it's channeled ability. And we need to play the chasm. So we have 10 mana. Uh, for the next turn. Oh man, please, please make him not have double counter spell for one time in my life. He only has four cards. That's not a lot. That really is not a lot. Enemy knows what's coming. There's no questions about it. I have, I think that there's high chance he dies to it, but like, I don't feel this is my day, <laughs> so I'm getting used to all the answers every time. Devious cover-up. So the first one was negated. Will he have another freaking one? For some reason, I'm sure he has. I don't know how, but it seems like he always has them. It cannot be Juari, at least. Can you die, finally? Thank you. You cannot believe how happy I am that he finally died. Oh my god, that was painful game. It was so close. Uh, if he didn't mess up Memorial Deluge, I think he, he would probably win in the long run. We have here. Uh, we have definitely good mana, but it's like on the draw we don't get better than this probably. It all depends what he has in, in, in hand. I don't mind Professor Onyx. We have pretty decent mana. Yeah, so like so far it's okay. I'm I'm a bit scared what comes next. Because we are extremely slow and the ramp is conditional. So I'm not even sure if we play it. Against this kind of deck we probably shouldn't, right? So if they have Juari, we are really in trouble. If they have Fading Hope, we don't really get get anything. Or we get one card maybe. Is this worth the risk? I will try it. Because generally if you play against control, this game will be 
quite long. Jewelry will probably be usable even later. And you have two more Shigekis. And if you play around Juari, it's basically the same as ev as if enemy always had Juari. And sometimes they won't, like uh, in this situation, they didn't have Juari. So you need to be a bit careful about gi giving enemy benefit of every card that you fear, because then it's basically like they had the card. In a way, you know? The enemy decided we are not aggro, and that's a smart choice. Emperor is very strange. I think they have another one, because they wouldn't discard it if that was the only one, I think. Okay. Honestly, it's, it's actually okay. We want uh, as much black mana as we can, and we definitely ramp. This will be extremely hard game. We need to really grind out the value out of the enemy. I'm not sure what we are playing against. Faithful Mending suggests something with Graveyard. We have Trespasser. It is possible we need to be really careful about him. This might be a counter spell. And I think that, please, not with this one time. Man, I don't know what's up with this deck. I either get flooded or like I whiff with Shigeki like 60% of the, of the games. And statistically, we should get 1.6 lands or something like this with every four cards. I do not know how it's possible. At least our graveyard is full, I guess, but the ramp was, was the main point. Oh man, I, I just I just can't sometimes. I guess we go with the trespasser, right? Then they doomscar. Was this good? Yeah, I think we don't really have better play, so let's do it. Like we can get trespasser with Shigeki, so it's not like it's gone. It's just you know for a moment not here. And exiling faithful mending, I think it's pretty good, and he cannot cast it in response. Uh, and I think we prefer the lands, even though we have some. With Shigeki we generally want as many as we can. Let's go for Swamp, as always. And now enemy needs to Doomscar main phase, so he will have only two mana. Unless he doesn't have Doomscar, but he really should with so many cards and he discarded one. Or maybe, maybe that was the only one and he decided that he doesn't need it. That would be great, because the ward is devastating for the control decks, and they definitely don't want to play it. Uh, March might get rid of the Trespasser permanently, though. And because we didn't get the ramp, we cannot punish enemy with Professor Onyx next turn. We would ha be at 5, we would play the 6th. And if he taps out, he is getting Professor Onyx on the face. Not the case here. Not the case here. Taplant is something you really like to see here in this situation. And we went into nighttime. Really nice. Really nice. Not sure what we are doing with this, to, to be honest. So let's just attack. So this is Emperor, but if he wants to target, uh, he still needs to exile some cards. And then we go for the binding because we don't really have good target. Uh, we don't really care about Doom's card. Card advantage, value, this is how we win. Our cards are really high value generally, uh, I mean creatures. So Doom's card won't really be a thing. He either doesn't have Wandering Emperor, which I find unlikely, or he doesn't want to play it yet. Like Binding would be so good if he plays it. We cannot really cycle well. So at this point, I think we just play the mid hook for zero. This is first spell, so we don't switch to daytime. That's really important. It entered the battlefield. Interesting. I'm not sure what to expect. Enemy might be playing very carefully, or maybe he doesn't have much answers in the hand. I would guess that he is just trying to be clever about his plays because he's not under pressure that forces him to do anything. It's just for damage and that's it. Not sure how important the graveyard is for him. They have this uh, three mana, draw a card and shuffle something. Some versions play Devious cover up. But 
Not sure if that's one of them. I think he wants to keep counter spell after the Doom Scare. So this would suggest that he has the counter spell. And that would mean that we do not play Professor Onyx. Yeah, as we said, this will be a very hard game. We don't really have good targets for anything. So honestly, a queen it invoked the spares. Enemy knows about Shigeki. We could go for Dig Up and Titan of Industry. I'm not sure how good it is. And Dig Up is really slow. And we don't really get like value. I honestly like this. Finally we have something to hit with the bindings. Because we need the ramp from the bindings, but I don't want to waste the value from you know this destroying permanent. And he always keeps three mana. So he definitely has a counter spell. I'm not sure which one. Is it dissipate? Because if he has saw it coming, he can just fortal it. I, I think he had the time. Unless maybe I didn't notice and we pressure him too much that he never had this opportunity. Alright, Titan is a given probably. But it's easy to counter, I guess. Maybe we just go Stomper and Trespasser? No, I think it's, we just need to go for the max value. Graveyard doesn't seem to be extremely important right now. Um, yeah, probably we should get one dig up. We go for the binding. I don't want to risk that we whiff on another Shigeki. Because then we don't really do anything. And we just need to make use of our mana while we have it. So this will get countered. And we probably play the Hive then. Not great, but we need to get, get through the counter spells somehow. I really want to kill the fairy right now. Yep. That's weird, he always took the 3 mana, so it's possible he has another one. That would have to be solid coming. We don't have a 3 mana play, so we might as well cast this one. Very hard game. And the fact that he will select one of the cards with the fairy is pretty horrible for us. We need to kill it as soon as possible so he doesn't get like huge value, but it's already a bit too high for my taste, you know? I like Fateful Mending. This is a card that doesn't give him card advantage, though the cycling is pretty insane. Not sure what the graveyard is about. Like still we don't really need see much synergy. He's he's discarding emperors like crazy. Don't you like this card? It's so it's so good here. Also the exile effect is really good for him. So I think we start with the binding. Like Professor Onyx needs to be a surprise play at some point in the game. Bosage is pretty good. At some point he will start activating the hall and we will be ready. Alright, we have enough green, right? And he went really greedy. Huh, I wanted to play land so he feels that we might follow up with another 4-drop. I hope it makes him reconsider counter, but okay, maybe. This seems like he doesn't have a counter spell, but he might just be clever and play, you know. So we feel that it was luck, but maybe he just has counter spell all the time. Oh, well, hello. Mm, suddenly everything looks so much better. And I will play a bit more carefully, I think. Uh, you need to be extremely careful about using Boseijo. Because this deck definitely can use every amount of mana. I hope he will activate it and start pressuring. That would be the best case scenario for us. Huh. Yeah, I think we should do it. It will be a pain. It's already targeted, so if he activates it, uh, the effect was already here. He didn't take the mana, that's really good for us. 
Like, Hall is scary because when we play a Professor Onyx, he can kill her and we cannot get it back with uh, Shigeki because it's legendary. Of course the sound broke. Man, like, wizards are just going crazy with not caring about anything. Their game basically breaks sound every four to five games. I'm in every record session lately I restart the game like two or three times and I just don't care. <laughs> Man, what the hell. Alright, uh, enough round from my side. So negates won't heal this. What can he have? Make this appear? He doesn't play like he has a lot of counter spells, does he? Nice. Nice. This is Rhino and this is Shield. And Shield goes here, because if he wants to march this, oh boy, he needs to prepare a lot of mana. And Shield here means that he pays one mana and that's not a problem. Also Doomscar means that this doesn't die. And 7 damage a turn is quite a lot. Alright, this looks like Emperor. This really looks like Emperor. So how do we play this? Unfortunately he doesn't really tap out even after playing Emperor. I think we attack with only the small Rhino. It might be a mistake, but he's discarded so many Emperors, I'm pretty sure he has one. And this way he wants to get rid of the shield with Exile. So he either takes the damage or exposes the Wandering Emperor and doesn't get huge value. It gives him more time, but we have dig ups. Huh. I want to bait counters if he has them. Like this went through, but it might be a negate. It seems like a negate. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I do not mind this as much. Problem is that now he sees the Onyx, and this is the part I really don't like. Because now he will keep the mana always to protect, to like counter her. But at least we get to draw a card, right? But yeah, Death of Talent definitely hurts. I'm really happy that he didn't use it on Invoke Despair, because that's our basically hard counter. And. Like, usually you shouldn't really play more than one test of talents, especially if you play negates anyway. So, let's go for the Stomper. Uh, no Doomscar are foretold. So, if he wants to sweep, he will have 3 or 4 mana available. And this might open way for Onyx. Which we really want. I think I will cycle this. We really have zero value after playing Onyx. Hard game. As we mentioned, this will always be a very grindy, very hard matchup. Because basically they are doing what we are, but we are better against aggro a bit. And I don't know. I think we are better against aggro, but they definitely have the edge on the control side. Like, I guess we can outvalue them with Shigeki and stuff, but you, you can see our cards are not exactly about this part. I'm pretty sure he still has the Emperor. So this is Emperor and Negate, probably. So he kills the Titan. And then prevents the Onyx. Maybe we can go with the Hive. What is 2 value or less from his graveyard? Hall of the Storm Giant. That's, that's a pain. That is a pain and it will be free. I'm pretty sure he has the Emperor. And we will force him to play it. Also, attacking with the Hive exiles the hall, which is so amazing. And we can still cycle the Zayatora. Attack, attack, everything except the card that you actually want to kill. Alright, so I'm pretty sure it's the hall, right? He has no other permanent, so let's get rid of this. I know you wanted it. Ha! Baited. I knew it's there. Good. Good, good, good. And now our Titan became huge problem for the enemy. We can also use Meat Hook to get rid of the thingy. Yep. 
that still hurts, but Emperor always will hurt. And I, f I believe we got the best value that we could get from it. And that's still 8 damage. That's no joke. And given we don't do anything, let's go for the Proving Grounds and draw a basic land instead of non-basic land. Oh man, I... <laughs> I'm fine with this. I'm really am fine with this. I do not have any strong feelings about this particular swamp on top of my deck. And I'm not counting hands to see how many I drew. <laughs> oh man, we definitely need Shigaki or something. Like th we didn't hit a single. Wow. Wow. We didn't hit a single Invoke Despair in the whole game so far. We have four of them and we drew half a deck. All right, and we are keep we we are still drawing lands. Oh, finally! I'm so glad it went through. That's insanely important. Okay, this is what we what we needed. Of course, we miss one land, right? Sure, because this one is stopped. Because why wouldn't it? But it's already a bit better. Uh, let's see if he can answer Onyx because this will be the big problem. Can he answer the Onyx? This is the only thing keeping us in the game, and next turn it will be Invoke. Uh, Midhook will, will solve this part. Land is amazing, and his lands don't do anything, which is even better. Like, it's extremely hard. Oh, that's so good. Like, maybe not the perfect, but it's, it's good. We draw the card. We do it first, because he might answer otherwise. It's Binding, or the Stomper? Stomper creates pressure. Uh, binding kills the Emperor. Uh, so basically this is a card draw, because Invoke Despair will kill the Emperor anyway. I think it's a Stomper, because it's more pressure. Then we go for this. We have to sweep before the tokens become a problem. And this forces him to play around Onyx. You had this card and you didn't play it, play it, main phase? Like, that's super weird. Okay, we got it. Like, he didn't answer Onyx. And he didn't take his card, though. I don't know what's, what's the idea behind this one. Unless he knows that there's nothing in his deck that does it, I'm not sure. And right now he just gave us Memory Deluge. We can exile it. And that's pretty huge. We can attack Emperor with the Hive and exile the Memory Deluge and he cannot cast it in response. Uh, he, I, in my opinion, he completely messed up this turn. And that basically gave us so much extra value that we never should have. Unless that's a masterful bait. Just please give me combat, please. Please, 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 please. Combat. Combat. Don't. Don't use the March. No, March cannot hit land creatures. You are just a horrible person. Maybe we just got baited. It was too good to be true, I guess. But still, uh, we have Onyx. If he has Memory Deluge, that's his nearly full turn. Okay, he went for value. I guess that's okay for us. And he's head dance. Oh man, he had dancer. But we can take Onyx back. And he doesn't know about the second round, and finally, oh man, finally, this is a bit scary. Uh, he has eight mana. At this point, we are going for it. And you never tap out for clue at first. I really don't want test of talents. Man, this guy has everything, like literally everything throughout the game. Perfect answers. All right, we will try to work around it, but man, this is this is bad. You don't really play two test of talents and negate on top of this, and restoration of a ganjo. It's just so bad against like aggro decks. I feel faithful mending. I guess is something that is supposed to cycle the test of talent. Okay, I, I I guess I get the idea behind the deck. So you have a lot of side cards. But you just cycle those that aren't for the matchup. So, you know, okay, I like it. I do approve. Stop looking at my deck. 
I don't want you to remember my cards. Just exile those four and we are going on with it. Alright, I think we just go with the Stomper right now. We get to draw a card, we get to draw a land. By the way, our deck is so thin because he exiled like seven cards out of it. And let's go for Swamp. Like, we might get milled. We might actually get milled. I really like the Stomper, if you don't know by now, because it also doesn't tap, so the Emperor cannot answer it in any way. Alright, what a freaking game. Like, against Control, it's just a grind fest. Who gets more value? But honestly, Test of Talents destroy our main value from the deck. But that's a card that nearly nobody plays anymore, because of like Boros and things like this. and. Like, you you usually die when you have it in hand. Alright. We still don't have a sweeper or anything like this. Do we take one big hit? Like, it would make some sense, right? I kind of think it's okay. We don't lose anything, so basically he can go with the Samurai block and he doesn't lose anything, but he might go greedy and trade with the Ender. Okay, that's a smart, good play. How many cards do we actually have? We can take only four cards, that's not a lot. It actually is not a lot. So I think it means that we kill one of the angels, so we can get the blood chief first back. Like, we need to get some value at some point. And this means that enemy didn't answer the stomper, so we still have some pressure on the board. We have, what, 6, 8, 10 mana, so we can get 4 cards back. That's quite a lot. And the emperor will put the counter on something that will die most likely. Okay, smart choice. Enemy is knowing what he's doing. He knows that we can take any removal and target danger. Okay, this means that he doesn't have any buffing stuff. Which I guess he wouldn't play the Emperor just to trade with the Stomper anyway. Field of Ruin. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's get our four cards. We really deserve those ones. We don't have Invoke this pair, so we don't need to uh, to be bothered by this one. Yeah, let's go like this, I think. This one is better against Hall or something like this, and our life is not the biggest issue here. Alright, that's some value. I like the War Chief, that's pretty good. Enemy definitely wants to memory the Luz this turn, so we should do everything we can. To not let it happen. Alright, so we get rid of the blocker. Maybe we bait some counter spells, like enemy still has two cards. We could go for the war chief. It's not the worst, honestly. I'm a bit scared what he will do, but I think we need to pressure him before he casts Memory Deluge. Later it might be a huge issue. And this has Trample and it will leave the Rhino and we still get to draw a card. And we definitely need to draw one because we have Anti-Creature part of the deck. And I think there should be something left in the deck that has the value against this kind of matchup. Yeah, and there is the Memory Deluge. Alright, let's see what he draws. So he decided that he wants to know what answers he has before answering this one. If he gets a counter, that's a good target probably. So he wants to dig up for, for the future decisions and see what's up. He has only 4 mana, right? So that's not the most. Well, that's actually smart. He can he can target our land, and if we don't have basic, first of all we have one less. Okay, and that's a solid coming. So he had it, or uh, at least he drew it probably. We could kill the emperor. Okay, let's go for the value. 
It will be hard, but the enemy wasted quite a lot of memory deluges by now. And if we can clear everything in a way for free and we keep the, the cards, this can hit Planewalkers, so that's pretty good. Ramp is not the biggest one here. Uh, so this is Cycling and that other one is probably Onyx, I would say. Yeah, Onyx might be some way to close the game. I, I think that we really need to deal a lot of damage. This would be great, like, every turn for the last three turns. But yeah. Alright, let's start attacking and see what's up. Unfortunately, he will take it and not react. And then we are in a pickle. Do we draw a card or do we take Takenuma and go for Onyx? Is he out of counter spells finally? He needed to draw Memory Deluge for one counter spell. He knows that we can take Onyx. I think it's not the turn. Perfect. This is it's not ironic, this is actually really good because this will force him to react finally. And we want him to tap out, we want a lot of mana, we want a lot of things. And we still can Takenuma at then step, so it will give us more mana to react. Man, can you stop with memory deluge? Oh my god. So many of them. Stop. Like enemies like basically sideboarded against our deck. I wonder how he does against like aggro decks, because I guess life gain helps. Uh, it, it seems like a solid deck. I'm just a bit salty <laughs> after this game. But yeah, the deck seems pretty good. I like the combination of Fateful Mending and Test of Talents, because basically you can have it in matchups like ours, with when where those cards are really devastating. Okay, that's fine. Alright, and this is the Onyx turn. This is the best we have. We need to go with it. Enemy has what? 3, 6, 7 mana. That's still quite a lot. But we need to get there somehow. Well, I guess Shigeki would also be okay. And we can check for traps. Okay, okay. I, I just changed my mind. You know. I'm allowed to. Oh, nice. Celestus for last nine cards. <laughs> That's helpful. Alright, how much mana do we have? Six. Thirteen. Five cards, right? Yeah, five cards. That's quite a lot. But it means that the enemy can do whatever he wants. So we go War Chief, Double Stomper, check for traps, and probably Takenuma. Well, that seems pretty powerful. For this reason, we cannot really play Celestus. It is not the worst, but it's definitely not what we need right now. And we basically, to play Celestus, we need to waste one. Are you freaking serious? That's the fourth one, right? Okay, we have three. Alright, I guess it's the third one. Then I will rant about this guy because he has so much value. Like, he doesn't whiff for a single turn every turn since start. That's probably definition of control deck, I know. But sometimes it's good when they don't have 11 mana of card draw. It helps win the games. Alright, let's get with our card draw. If they instant remove Graveyard somehow, I won't be happy. So it's what? Five cards. Let's not mess this up. Alright. War Chief. No, oh, Takanuma is legendary. Uh, be free, uh, feel free to point it out in the comments, because I know I've been reminded about it already. And let's go for the binding, it kills the planewalkers or stuff. But it's still the same play that we would do anyway, but that definitely not 
entirely in, in uh, how do you say it intentional intentional Adam is thinking about stuff i wonder what he's thinking about uh turns out nothing all right that's a field of ruin not the worst i get i guess and at this point we don't take cards from our deck because we are at eight cards man enemy is just grinding the life out of us i should probably check for traps first right i should definitely do it <laughs> i should so much do it but i think we'll go for celestus and take check for traps after he memory the rouges and we can answer whatever he plays with Binding and uh, March. He also needs to sweep, but I'm pretty sure he won't have any troubles with this. Well, it will be... Oh, wow. Oh, wow, it's get it gets better. He definitely can protect it, right? So we have what? six mana so we can march for five like we have to do it now let's see like obviously he has something he can nearly memory the rouge just in response wandering emperor even better okay but he has chosen to save the whole breaker so it gives us a little bit of time at least we lose the value though let's wait for the emperor thing he made a samurai um okay sure uh, no let's not be greedy we might get worried and i would hate my life for it so let's just go for two so at least we get rid of the emperor yeah, we need to really pressure enemy and he can hull breaker into multiple spells and then our war chief will get bounced even with blitz i guess with mid hook maybe we have some chance this deals one damage don't forget this is one damage they are two damage so enemy is at seven effectively <laughs> do we take it yes yes i will wow this is such a great action this actually removes the samurai, so it's basically a targeted removal for 3 mana. And that costs us mid hook. Enemy wants to mirror. Like, we don't win in the long game. So we need to go for this at least. Alright, this is not the worst. Carling Ritual. I don't want to lose the mid hook massacre. Okay, that's a decent draw. If we cast this, he plays the Hullbreaker Horror. But then at least we have some options, right? That's a hard one. Let's try. Let's test how he be how he behaves. He should probably play the Hullbreaker. Yep. Now we need to get rid of the cards that he can use to protect it and use the binding. Unfortunately, wow 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 <laughs> oh man definitely the stroke but yeah even Juaris are basically hard counter spurs here do we have good creatures not really only shigeki But we have a lot of mana, so we can, I guess, replay quite a lot of times the binding. So it means that he needs to bounce the horror. What is the play here? All right. I see, I see. And he wants to kill it, sure. Not sure what the oops is about, to be perfectly honest. no idea oh yeah he probably should wait no yeah he should wait for the target so that's what i think that was the oops okay we get it i i got it 
So now we should go for the war chief. When it goes into graveyard, like, bro, really? All right, we attack. He will kill it, but at the same time we get the token. Like, we still have some turns to try to finish him. Man, this game is such a grind. Hullbreak, I think he should be more aggressive with the Hullbreaker a bit. Yep, we draw a card. We probably don't really use the crew even. We need to really hit him at least once so the mid hook can finish the job somehow. Not sure if it's possible, but we definitely will try. Like this 4 damage would be amazing, but it won't hit, right? Obviously. He's at 6. Agadim's awakening will be huge. Do we actually go for Shigeki? No. We have some turns. We still can use this value. Nope. Now we do not draw. We need every single turn. We need one huge turn with Shigeki. And then we need to hope he whiffs. But so far he never whiffs with anything. Yep. Alright, so what is the plan here? And whatever we have, search your library. Oh, that's my library. I thought it's my graveyard. Uh, by the way, cool card to have before. Alright, we play the land. And we probably play the Agadim's Awakening. So we get Shigeki, Stomper, and the War Chief, right? Seems pretty good. But what he will do? He will hold Breaker, it's 7 mana, and then Juari. We still should do it. And this, and this, and this. That's my selection. Well, this will be a lot of mana, but then we can pressure with the binding and he needs to get rid of the last Juari. He doesn't have too much mana for the Lush because he's playing like 14 mana a turn at instant speed. So yeah. And we still get it in hand, right? We are at 28, so we are in no pressure of dying. But we are in huge pressure of not being able to play anything for the rest of the game. And I do like playing stuff. And this has to be a binding, right? I don't even know if he knew about it. I think he knew. I guess he could... Okay, he, he decided to protect the Hull Breaker. That's fine. Uh, no reason to pay. It fizzles anyway, basically, and we don't want to lance from, from the graveyard. Like, honestly, do we attack with Shigeki? <laughs> it seems crazy, but it might be okay idea. Like, next turn, what happens? He plays this main phase, probably. Four, seven. He has Memory Deluge. Let's count his mana. Five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, thirteen, or fourteen. So maybe he can bounce only one spell. I'm not sure about this play. I really am not. But he's at six. Every damage might matter. So you know, let's try. And by the way, it will have Death Touch. The death touch. So it means that maybe. Yeah, I, I think it's a good player. And I don't think he will uh, forget about it. But you know, another anger. Man, I think we still have shot at winning this game. But it's very slim. It's very slim. Like we have so little time. No, we do not draw a card. Okay, we got a good card here. If we play the check for traps, it doesn't change really anything. 
he doesn't know about the Gala get, Bala get recovery. We could get Professor Onyx. No, but he just bounces it. Like everything. What a madman. So let's attack. You know, just a little one damage attack. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? If you feel intense, this game is hella intense. <laughs> I I don't know if it, if we can reach this extra damage. It's always five. It has to be five. This, this, and Shigeki. Does it matter? Sure. Sure. It's free. Why not have two Shigekis? Someone could say because they are legendary. And we say no, we untap for free. Yep. Okay, so then memory deluge and now he's tapped out we need to use this moment to do stuff i wish i had so much more mana okay so he gets the selection but this is our turn to come back first time he's completely tapped out and at our mercy we have four mana seven eight mana Man, we lack one for Professor Liliana. We would minus three and we would win. But it's okay. It's okay. We can go for Binding. We can go for Infernal Grasp. Both work. We, we lose a lot of value though. Field of Ruin don't matter, so let's tap it. Just to be sure. Eight mana, right? Four, eight. So we are five like we are literally with all those lands one short to have a winning play but we will try for the other winning play target card from the graveyard we are that's sorry yeah we are after the attack okay otherwise we would take the rhino and win but of course we are after I'm losing track of this game, but guys, like it's been so long. I feel like it's going forever. Uh, Blood Chief first. Infernal Grasp. Binding. Binding gives Death Touch. And we have mana to play it. Okay, I really don't want to mess anything up here. Like, there is a huge chance we... If he finally whiffs. Like, we are at 30. Like, we have two turns to finish him off. Next turn we can go for Agadim Awakening. And in the last turn... No, <laughs> uh, we don't draw. Uh, we can make big attack. Maybe we can even make situation where, you know... Oh, and if we get double Shigeki, then one dies and we get additional damage. That's actually huge. This might also be good. Decline. Let's, that, this is our deck. This is our deck. <laughs> um, I think this is when you play Blitz. If you cast the spell. Okay, we cannot do it. It means that we attack first and see what's up. Oh man, we could actually... Is that the play? We could go for Shigeki. No, Liliana is legendary. But we could go for the Warchief and go with Blitz then. But we have to draw a card. Is it forced? Uh, when this creature dies, draw a card. So we have to draw a card. Okay, so not really great. Let's attack. That's my final decision. We are attacking. I'm so scared enemy has counter spell. Man, if we win this game, I, I'm speechless. I won't believe it. Oh man. I don't know how to rumble anymore because I'm just so stressed <laughs> during this game. I I want him to finally not have the answer. I want him to whiff. I want this to be three lands. 
Which is possible, because he has Field of Ruins, so we wouldn't know. I'm pretty sure he's just going for go, your go, your go. But yeah, this is basically like control against control. Are you serious? Exile. So the damage is not done. But I think he didn't really want to do it. Let's go for this. I'm pretty sure he has counters. But I don't know how, but they always have everything. They always have everything. We don't have any more creatures, so this is the best one we can go for. And this will get countered, you will see. Easy. <gasps> is this happening? This is already 4 damage on the board. This is 4 damage on the board. Can I do anything? This kills our Shigeki. But we might need this somehow. Like, worst case, we can get back Shigeki to hand, then cast War Chief. Of course, of course. It's 3 damage. But we get the Rhino, but of course, this will be removal. Right? I'm pretty sure it has to be a removal, and he will live with exactly 1 HP, and I will rage quit this game for. <laughs> Are you freaking serious? Are you freaking serious? It's not even a bound, like, this is exactly the best card because it doesn't even deal one damage to him. I cannot believe this. I simply cannot believe this. I'm so angry right now. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, he's left at 2 HP with zero cards. Zero everything. And I don't think we have anything that we can change the situation. That's a good game. That was a well played game by the enemy. I hate it, but it was a really good game. Oh, but we. At least I hope you. I hope you enjoyed this one. Because it was pleasure, pain stress happiness it was all emotions in one game basically oh but let's go into the next one